Welcome to Inside Out Online. This video is an introduction video for the capo. I'm using a G7th capo and I'm going to talk a little bit more about it at the end of the video. What does the capo do? Very simply, what does it do? It lifts the notes to be higher. When I strum these open strings, they are vibrating from this point to this point. So the capo lifts this point and shortens the strings, which makes the pitch go higher. Let's say I'm playing this song and the melody goes da 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 da, and I'm going da. I'm like, I don't want to go down there. Mm -hmm. So the quick thing to do is throw a capo on, start at two. Da 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 da. That same melody. Everything has lifted. The chord has lifted and the voice has lifted. So whatever you add with your capo, one, two, you have to move that point in your mind too. It's no longer down here, but it's lifted up to here. Now the cool thing about this, and this is what you have to remember, this G chord is now no longer a G because it's been lifted. So you have to know a little bit about how music notes work. The musical alphabet goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and after G is not H, but A again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And so I lifted the capo up one step. One full step is two notes. If you take a step with your feet, you don't literally put one foot right after the other, there's about a foot between each foot when you step. It kind of works the same way with music. One full step is to skip one, one thing, one fret in this case. So one step is two frets. G is now, what's higher than G? A. This is an A chord now. That's the big idea for the capo is that um, it, it lifts the chord to wherever you want to go. Let's have a little bit of fun with that. If we said this is now A, what if we went up another step? What's literally higher than A? A, B. This is now a B chord. So this brings us to another important concept for the capo. Let's say I don't know how to play in the key of B, or I don't want to play in the open B position. Well, now I can play these familiar shapes, like a G, maybe a C, and a D, and an E minor, and now those chords are key of B chords. This is G, this is whatever that would have lifted to, which is an E, the D has lifted to an F sharp, the E has lifted to an G, a G sharp minor. As you're using the capo, one of the first things you should memorize is these six notes. G, which is where you play your G chord. That's G. This is A, B, C, D, and E. You should memorize those six notes. Just like you memorized your string names, E, A, D, G, B, E, you need to memorize these notes. G, A, B, C, D, E absolutely put those to memory. Then your ability on the capo is gonna really open up. Here's some fun ideas uh, to, to think about for the capo. There's basically five main keys, open position keys that we play most commonly on the guitar. We play the key of G, we play the key of A, the key of C, the key of D, and the key of E. So A, C, D, E, and G. So finally, the main thing to remember when using the capo, the very first introductory thing to remember, is if you're singing a song that's too low, using the capo will lift that key for you and allow you to possibly sing that same song, playing those same shapes that you were already playing, but being a comfortable place for your range. That's the most common reason that people use the capo on an acoustic guitar if they're singing. That's why they've used it. They've decided this key down here is too low. 
and I need to sing a little bit higher. So coming away from that video is that idea. And the second one is to remember these six notes, G, A, B, C, D, and E. And in video two, we're going to dig into why that's so important. You can go to insideoutonline.com, download a free guidebook, and I'll see you on video two for the capo.